welcome to EPG Patshala. Dear students, in today's module, we are going to discuss about renewable energy resources. In this world, 75% of the energy requirement is met by fossil fuel. And the world is looking for an alternate energy source or alternate energy sources that can overcome the limitations of fossil fuels. And renewable energy plays a very significant role in this regard. Renewable energy has the capability for a constant replenishment and it will never run out. It gave a chance for us to reduce carbon emissions, clean air and preventing the global warming of this planet. It is compatible with the principles of sustainability. So, in this module, we are going to discuss about what is renewable energy sources with its examples, how it differs from the non-renewable energy resources and the consumption pattern of renewable energy with respect to India. Let's start with what is renewable energy. US Environment Protection Agency has defined renewable energy as the resources that rely on fuel resources that restore themselves over a short period of time and they don't diminish. And the term renewable is generally applied to those energy resources and technologies whose common characteristic is that they are non-depletable or naturally replenishable. The primary energies that are regarded as inexhaustible in terms of human dimensions that is during the life of a human. These energy sources are also known as non-conventional sources of energy. Non-conventional energy resources are considered for the energy use recently, that is mainly after the oil crisis. The examples are solar, wind, biomass, etc. And the conventional energy resources are being traditionally used for many decades and were in common use. For example, the fossil fuel. Renewable energy sources. The examples include solar energy, wind energy, ocean thermal power, wave and tidal energy, geothermal energy, hydropower energy, etc. Let's see what are the characteristics of a renewable energy sources. Regenerated in natural processes continuously. These energy resources continuously generated like solar energy, geothermal energy, tidal energy. These are used indefinitely. It is available in great amount or abundant in nature or naturally available primary energies or primary energy carriers are renewable in nature. It develops in a relatively short period of time. The solar energy is responsible for most of the other renewable energies such as wind, hydropower, biomass. They are capable of solving the twin problems of energy supply in decentralized manner and helping in sustaining cleaner environment. Why we need renewable energy sources? The major energy source is fossil fuel and are going to get depleted at a rapid rate. If the fuel reserves decrease, there will be a sharp increase in the price of energy. Fossil fuel based systems create environment deterioration and also in turn will affect our health. It results in spending more on medical bills. So, if alternative sources are explored and utilized, then the fuel may be actually used for more number of years. Wind energy, the wind motion to generate electricity. The wind motion is brought about by the heat from the sun and rotation of the earth, mainly by the Coriolis force. Solar energy taps heat from the sun to produce energy for the generation of electricity, heating, lighting homes and commercial buildings. While the hydropower utilizes moving water to produce electricity. Moving water creates high energy that can be harnessed and turned into power. It takes advantage of rising and falling of tides to generate electricity. In geothermal energy, it leverages heat from underneath the earth to generate electricity. So, you can see that in all these, all the processes are natural. Coming to solar energy in detail, among renewable energy sources, the easily accessible and most important one is the solar energy. It can be used directly or indirectly for the human body. The direct solar energy is the radiant energy, whereas indirect solar energy is the energy obtained from the material such as biomass in which sun's radiant energy has been incorporated by the plants. Direct solar energy on global scale 
15 days of solar energy is roughly equivalent to the energy stored in all the known reserves of fossil fuel on this earth. The continuous input of the energy from the sun is 1,67,000 times greater than the current consumption. Solar energy can be used for direct heating. Alternatively, the heat can be converted into electricity that is thermal electric generation or by the photovoltaic cells. The solar cells or the solar batteries convert direct solar energy into electricity. The other types of solar energy devices are solar power pumps, solar pond, electric it is used for the solar furnaces, distillation, etc. Thus, solar energy can be harnessed for domestic, commercial or industrial purpose. India has been one of the major producers of photovoltaic systems currently used in street lighting, domestic lighting systems, community lighting systems, water pumping systems, small power plants, cookers, etc. India installed largest solar steam cooking system for the cooking for 15,000 people per day at Tirupati Temple in Andhra. Indirect solar energy, it related to biomass energy, where solar energy is utilized indirectly and has been the major source of energy to the human beings throughout the history of civilization. This energy, this biomass energy is the outcome of the photosynthesis. It is bestowed in the material such as live plant material and their dead it is bestowed in the material such as live plant material and their dried residues, fresh water and marine algae and the agriculture and forest residues of plant and animal origin. Apart from this, the biomass also includes biodegradable organic waste from industries like sugar mills, breweries, etc. This fuel may be solid like wood, animal duck, peat, charcoal, etc. which are used for burning. Liquids such as biomethanol and bioethanol which are used in internal combustion engine of automobiles or gas such as animal waste produced biogas, a mixture of gases mainly ethane and carbon dioxide which are produced in the biogas digesters. Although production of energy requires sufficient area of land and water, but in its various form biomass energy appears to have a bright future as the source of energy. At least half of the global population relies upon biomass as the main energy source for the domestic use, especially in the developing countries. The firewood is most widely used biomass, quite common fuel in this world. The next one is the hydro energy or the water power. Water power has been in use since the period of Roman Empire. Water falling from a height turns turbines at the bottom of dams to generate electricity. Presently, water power is widely used all over the world and produces approximately one-fourth of the world's electricity. The electricity produced by the hydropower is much cheaper than electricity produced by the thermal power. The water power is a clean energy source as it does not cause environmental pollution and the electricity produced can be transmitted to long distances through the wires and cables. But building a dam leads to several environmental problems such as submergence of plant and animal habitats and displacement of local inhabitants including the tribals. The hydrothermal energy is the largest source of domestic electricity production in Canada around 60%, 84% in Brazil, 55% in Switzerland, 80% in Iceland and 98% in Norway. Countries like Norway, Canada and Brazil have all been utilizing more than 30% of their hydro potential while India ranks fifth in terms of exploitable hydro potential in the world. About 75% of the total electricity consumed in South America is derived from hydropower. Japan, US, Russia and many other European countries have trapped mo most of their water resources and harnessed energy to generate electricity. In India, generation of hydroelectric power was emphasized in the first five year plan when a number of multi-purpose projects such as Bakranangal project on river Sutlej, Bokaro in Panchar and Talaya in Damodar Valley and Hirakud, Rehant, Nag Nagarjuna Sahar, Koshi, Koina were launched to generate hydroelectric power apart from their use for irrigation and other purposes. Wind energy. The wind power has been in use since Chinese and Persian civilization. Wind has propelled ships and driven windmills to grind grain and pump water in Netherlands during early days. Now wind is used to generate electricity in various countries. Harvesting wind energy is possible only in those areas that receive fairly continuous winds such as islands, coastal areas and the mountain passes. When Gigantic fans raised on tall towers are rotated by the wind, its energy can be used for the generation of electricity. Since 
wind power has the potential to give tremendous energy the day is not far away when the destructive force of air currents of cyclone typhoons and fierce gales would be tamed india occupies fourth after china usa and germany in the wind power generation windmills are used in rajasthan to draw sub soil water for the irrigation recently two wind farms of 10 megawatt each has been installed in tamil nadu and gujarat with international cooperation from denmark ocean energy the ocean forms a vital source of energy this energy is obtained in various forms such as ocean tidal and wave energy and the ocean thermal energy conversion that is otec ocean tidal and wave energy the ocean tides are produced by the gravitational force of sun and moon contain enormous amount of energy the high tide and low tide refer to the rise and fall respectively of the water in the ocean this en tidal energy this tidal energy is harnessed by construction of a tidal barrage dams built across the mouth of a river confluence with oceans permit sea water to flow through small opening filled with propellers connected to electric turbines during high tide the sea water flows into the reservoir of barrage and turns the turbines which in turn produces electricity by rotating the generators during low tide when the sea level is low the sea water stored in the barrage reservoir flows out into the sea and again turns the turbines the power of ocean waves that operates on the principle of oscillating water column it has not been exploited to its full potential except as power supplies for the navigational aids india has initiated the wave energy project of the virinam fishery harbor near trivandrum in kerala as an indigenous effort it was expected that on the completion of this project it would be able to derive an energy output of 4.45 lakhs units per year the project resulted in a strict reality in 1991 when it started generation of electricity to be fed to the grid of kerala state electricity board the next one is the ocean thermal energy conversion which is abbreviated as otec the sun warms the oceans at the surface and wave motion mixes the warm water downward to the depth of about 100 meters and this mixed layer is separated from the deep cold water formed at high latitudes by a thermocline this boundary is sometimes marked by the abrupt change in the temperature more often the change being gradual thus resulting temperature distribution consists of two layers separated by an interface with temperature differences between them ranging from 10 degrees celsius to 30 degrees celsius the higher values are found in equatorial waters and these two enormous reservoirs in some oceanic regions provide the heat source and heat sink that required to operate heat engine the engine using this energy is referred as otc which makes use of the difference of temperature between the two layers of the sea to harness energy which in turn used to drive turbines for generation of electricity otc can also be used to desalinate water support deep water mariculture and provide refrigeration and air conditioning facilities and can prove as an aid to mineral extraction the concept of otc was first demonstrated in 1979 when a small plant mounted on a barge of hava usa produced 50 kilowatt gross power india possesses a huge potential of otc which could be of the order of about 5 lakh megawatt about 150% of the present total installed power generating capacity of this country some of the best global otc sites are situated in the indian mainland and the near islands of lakshadweep andaman and nicobar in india an ocean energy cell has been developed at iit chennai to keep pace with international developments in this area a us company c solar power is promoting the use of otc and the world's first plant in india is proposed of the cost of tamil nadu with a capacity of 100 megawatt geothermal energy the natural heat from the interior of earth can usefully be converted into energy this natural heat comes from the fission of radioactive material present in the rocks in the interior of the earth the idea of harnessing geothermal energy is utilizing dry steam was developed in italy as early as in 1904 natural internal heat of the earth was harnessed by the geohydro thermal conversion hot igneous and geopressurized systems presently there are several geothermal plants working successfully in usa new zealand russia japan mexico and california the heated ground water flowing upwards as hot water stream and hot springs the nature's geysers can be used to turn turbines and generate electricity in india the natural geysers are common in kulu and manali manikaran and sohana and some other places 
and the assessment of this geothermal energy potential of selected sites in Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh is being undertaken. And some more field investigation including deep drilling at potential geothermal sites would be required before these sites can be taken up for the development for the geopower generation. Now we will see the world status of renewable energy consumption. Renewable energy supplies 18 percentage of the world's total energy consumption as given in this figure. It is from traditional biomass, large hydropower and new renewables including small hydropower, biomass, wind energy, solar energy, geothermal and biofuels. The traditional biomass and hydropower represents about 71 percent and 16 percent respectively of the total renewable energy. In terms of total energy share, biomass and the large hydropower represents 13 percentage and 3 percent respectively. What is the scenario of renewable energy consumption in India? The importance of renewable or the non-conventional energy sources was recognized in the country in the early 1970s. Today, India has large programs on this renewable energy. The activities cover all major renewable energy sources such as biomass, solar, wind, ocean, small hydropower plants and other emerging technologies. Several renewable energy systems and devices are now commercially available. The Department of Non-Conventional Energy Sources set up in 1982 has been raised to the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy Sources. This ministry that is MNRE is the nodal ministry of government of India for all the matters relating to the renewable systems and devices. India's commercial energy consumption has been growing fast in recent years, keeping pace with high economic growth rate. In India, total renewable energy production is around 48,069 megawatt. Out of that, 46,653 megawatt is installed grid interactive renewable power capacity and 1,403 is of off-grid or captive. In this table, you can see the total installed capacity and target up to 2022 of the installed grid interactive renewable power capacity in India. You can see a total of the installed capacity is 46,665 while 2022 the target is 1,76,000 megawatt. These renewable energy sources are newer and fast developing which is managed by the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. In addition to that, India had 43,112 megawatt of installed large hydro capacity which comes under the Ministry of Power. Apart from installed grid interactive renewable power capacity, off-grid or captive renewable power capacity in India is 1,403 megawatt equivalent and it is given in this table. Now what are the limitations of renewable energy sources? It's costly, it has expensive storage cost, large capital cost. The electricity generation capacity is still not large enough so that the renewable energy can be commercialized fully. The renewable energy is unreliable, that is it isn't a constant energy. And the renewable energy technologies are totally dependent on the weather, for example, it is solar energy or wind energy. It depends on the weather that is to be harnessed. The renewable energy take a lot of space to install. For example, solar energy generation technologies take over 40 hectares of panels to generate about 20 megawatts of energy. It is difficult to assess for many people or you can say for all, all the people in this world. It's only suitable to areas with sunshine, wind power, geothermal potential. And some technology still generates pollution. For example, biomass burning, geothermal exploration, etc. So, to conclude, Renewable energy sources are never ending and can be replenished time after time. India has the immense potential of renewable energy sources such as solar, wind, geothermal, tidal, biomass, etc. Developing these renewable technologies are important for the generations to come. The technologies developed for the efficient utilization of these energy sources may help in the energy sufficiency of our country. In this module, we have seen what is renewable energy resource and what are the examples. For example, we have seen about solar energy, wind energy, hydro energy, geothermal energy, tidal energy, ocean thermal energy conversion, etc. And we have seen that it differs from the non-renewable energy resources by its renewability, continuous regeneration, abundancy and unlimited availability and moreover, it is a cleaner 
resource for the energy. We have seen the benefits as well as the limitation of the current renewable energy technologies. We have also seen the consumption pattern of renewable energy with respect to India. Thank you.